Welcome to Pathway Church Online. We're honored you tuned in today. It's our purpose to help each person believe in Jesus, belong to a church family, become a fully devoted follower of Christ, and build God's kingdom. We believe today's message will help you do just that. It will change your life if you listen and apply it. For more information about Pathway Church, please visit www.pathwaychurchok.com. Now, let's go together and hear today's message. Uh, Grapes, are we we all cool? (laughs) That didn't sound like it. (laughs) It kind of sounded like a little grudge in your voice. Say, oh man. Grapes are the only fruit that are raised to die. Grapes are raised to be crushed. It is meant to be bruised. If grapes had emotion, if grapes could scream, they would cry out from the pain of becoming wine. Have you all seen those shows where it's like the big wooden bucket and there's grapes and everybody's dancing around, smashing it all? If you're the grape, does that feel good? No. If you're the grape, you got some stinky toes jumping on you, and it's gross, it's nasty, it hurts, there's pain. You don't understand why there's pain, but there's this pain. But if you can endure the pain of the crushing and trust the gardener will take them through a process, get this, on the other side of the process, they take on a new value. You can buy grapes for pennies. You can't buy wine for pennies. Wine is actually very expensive. You can get thousands. I've seen bottles go for like a million dollars. It's crazy how much wine could cost. Like certain wines... Uh, can be at the finest restaurants. They're served to dignitaries and and, and royalty. And and, uh, these wines are just crazy amounts of money. But in order for the wine to get to a place that it had a greater value, it had to endure the crushing of being transformed from grape to wine. In your life, there's a crushing. We don't always understand the crushing. But if we can endure the crushing, God uses it as part of our assignment to fulfill His purpose. There is a cost to your purpose. Jesus connects us to the Father to help us understand His role in our life. The one who prunes us, who cuts us who we think is bringing pain, but it's because there's a process of crushing that He is trying to implore upon us so that we can go and have a greater value in our relationship with Him. We have to understand that the knife that prunes us is in the hand of the right gardener that will produce a fruit that will last. When you discover your relationship with your purpose, you discover that it's only in this place that you thrive. That when you allow the gardener in your life to keep a watchful eye on you, you will thrive. But you've got to understand there are times and seasons of crushing. But if you can endure the pain The blessing comes on the other side of your crushing. You you don't always understand why the crushing takes place. The crushing makes you crawl up into a ball in a fetal position and cry in the corner of the room when no one's around. The crushing begins to make you think, God, why? Why me? Why do I have to deal with this for so long? And I speak into your life this morning. If there's a crushing that you're going through, 
if you can endure the pain, the blessing is on the other side. The blessing of the greater value comes on the other side of your crushing. If you're going to walk in the purpose that God has for your life, your number one, the, the purpose is going to cost you. But if it's going to cost you, there's got to be another element that's going to help you get through it. Because if you just say, hey, it's going to cost me and i got to figure this out on my own, you're all going to quit. I'm going to quit. The Apostle Paul was going to quit. No one's going to make it through if there's not hope on the other side. So number one, your purpose will cost you. But number two, even more importantly than that, your purpose sustains you. When you look at the Apostle Paul in the Bible, he's a prime example of being sustained by God and his purpose. We read it a while ago that the hand of God was upon his life. He carried the Spirit of God with him wherever he went. And the thing that I find so fascinating about Paul was not his success that he had as being a follower of Christ, but his true success was in that Paul knew who he was. He knew his purpose. He knew that he could only be sustained by God to do what God had called him to do. In your notes, Acts says, And now, behold, I'm going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and, uh, and afflictions await me. There is no way you can say, I'm going to go to that place and know that you're going to get beaten and get thrown in prison and think this is going to be fun unless there's something else that is sustaining you to be able to deal with the consequences that are going to come. Paul was successful because Paul didn't have to survive. Paul had already died to himself. Paul knew what it meant to be crucified with Christ. When I think of Paul I mean, just, just put yourself in his shoes. Somebody comes up to him and, and says, if you keep preaching this gospel, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to whip you. I'm going to take you out back. And, and he's like, okay, been there, done that. Ain't going to bother me. If, in, in fact, it's going to cause me to want to do more. Only a God that can sustain you can keep that motivation inside of you. If you do it on your own, you ain't going to make it. Right? Because we get offended on Facebook. Someone posts something, you know, oh, that, 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 gum, that little and we get offended and we get all up in a tizzy and we lose our mind over it. This guy's getting beaten. <laughs> hey, hey, Paul, if you keep preaching that gospel, we're going to throw you in prison. And Paul says, oh, would you? If, if you could take me back to the prison I just got out of, whenever God opened the gates for me that last time, I was this close to getting the prison guard saved. If you could send me back to that one, that would be awesome. Hey, Paul, we're going to kill you. Oh, 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 would you? Because to be absent from body is to be present with my Lord. The very purpose that he walked in was only allowed to be operated in because he was sustained by God. Yeah. I can go around to each person in this room and tell you your purpose. I could. It's pretty easy for me to do. Your purpose. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. Okay, you get it? When I have a relationship with my purpose, I understand my gardener is pruning me to flourish. Are you following me? There are people in your life that God has strategically put there because he has a purpose for your assignment in that role. You're sitting here thinking, man, I wish I didn't have this job. I don't like this job. You're being crushed. Because the assignment that God has is bigger than the crushing that you're going through. Okay? You're wondering, God, 
you gave me this job, so I thought, so I told everybody when I got the job, but a month after I got the job, I hate the job. I'm letting everybody know that I hate this job. It's not a good job for me. And God says, you were happy whenever I gave you the job, but what's happening now? There are people that God has strategically put there, but if you can't endure the crushing, God won't use you in that place. And as we said a while ago, if God can't use you in this place, He won't use you in the place over here. My dad always told me, whenever people would come to our church and say, I want to go be a missionary overseas, he said, you haven't saved anybody here. Why do you want us to pay for you to go over there if you're not doing it here? Amen. Way to go, Nora. <laughs> There is this calling upon our lives to do this thing that God has called us to do, but you have to understand in the environment in which you are placed in at this very moment, you may feel the crushing, but if you can endure the crushing, joy comes in when? The morning, if you can endure the crushing, the presence of God will come and fill your life and give you the ability to operate in the greater blessing that God has for you. You don't enjoy the benefits of a lasting wine if you're not being crushed at the beginning of the process. Are you following that? Do we have those handouts? Okay. Every one of you should have received a Roman road handout. It's got a, some Bible verses on there. That is the Roman road to salvation. In the month of March, as we've already said the last two weeks, we're going to be spending the month of March in prayer. And we're going to be praying for people. We're going to be praying for God to show up to people. In order for us to walk in the blessing that God has for us, some crushing is going to come. And the crushing can be in the form of something hard, something difficult, something physically, mentally, sp spiritually. But you, you say, Taylor, I don't really know my purpose. Let me tell you what your purpose is, okay? Your purpose is to build the body of Christ. That's your purpose. How do you build your purpose? Believe, belong, become, build. That's what we talked about at the beginning. Your purpose is to get people to believe in Jesus. Your purpose is is to get people to belong to a church family. Your purpose is to get people to become a fully devoted follower of Christ. Your purpose is to build the kingdom of God. Are you clear on the assignment? The assignment is not difficult. But I can tell you this, if you don't walk in your assignment, the blessing will never come. I always like whenever people say, well, I'm just sitting at home waiting for God to mail me a check. Well, you're going to go broke because I'm going to go out and make something happen. When I go make something happen, God shows up in the moment of faith of stepping out. It's very difficult to ask people to come to church. I get it. It's very difficult to say, hey, let me pray for you. It's very difficult to say, hey, let me um, just, uh, just let me, let me, um, let me say, uh, in Jesus' name, would you please touch us? It's very difficult. I get it. It's a crushing that we all have to go through. This is my seventh week of talking in front of you. This is very difficult for me. My back is all sweaty. It's very difficult for me. It's a crushing that I have to go through. There's a crushing. I'm not up here saying I'm going to do this and you do something different. No, we are all growing together. I said gr gr growing together. We are going together in the assignment that God has for us. But in order for us to fulfill our assignment, we have to understand what? You're going to be crushed. But here's the thing. Whenever you step out in faith, what happens? God sustains you in the middle of the crushing. Don't go alone. Don't do it by yourself. Just keep stepping out. Keep stepping out. Keep asking. Keep praying. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. And for those who seek, who those who knock, those who ask, will find the greater glory of God. 
I'm telling you people of God, I'm telling you church, I'm telling you family, I'm telling you friends, there's an assignment that God has for this church. We are to get people to believe, belong, become, and build. Believe, belong, become, and build. What's your assignment? You don't have to worry about all this other stuff out here. Let us run the church. Let us do that part. You get people to believe in Jesus here. You get people to belong here. You get people to become here. And you get people to build the kingdom here. And together we fulfill the call of God upon our lives to do what He's called us to do. If you can sustain yourself from the crushing, you get to turn yourself into wine. And once you turn yourself into wine, you have greater value that begins to last for years and years and years and years and years even a hundred plus years grapes die wine thrives only after the crushing so with that paper the Roman road paper pretend this is it there are people in your life that God needs you to get crushed on I want you to write a name of someone in that paper, someone who lives close, someone that you can invite to church, someone that is not going to church, someone that you can pray for, someone that needs God to do a miracle in. I want you to write your name on that, uh, write, write their name. Don't put your name on it. Write their name on top of that paper. And we're going to hang these up on this door. I already started ticky tack up there. I've got more on the, not ticky tack, what's that stuff called? Sticky tack. I've got more on the floor. I want that door completely filled, both doors of these cards. And there's more of them back there. Over the month of March, every week, we're going to pray for these people. All right? Because there's a crushing. And we get crushed together. We, I told you uh, three, four weeks ago, we're going to grow together. Isn't that right? Does that mean we only grow in the good times? Nope. It means we grow in together in the hard times. We've got to crush each other. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. But we're going to see God move. I believe with all my heart. It's part of what happened to me yesterday as I was praying. It's part of what took place this morning. I can feel something stirring on the inside of me that I can't explain. It's because there's a crushing process in order to get to the other side where we become what God's called us to become. If you need more of those cards, they're back around the table. Write the name. Again, I want their sticky tacks on the ground. Fill the whole thing full. Because every Sunday in March, we're going to pray for those people. And then April, crushing. We're going to start inviting. We're going to start asking. We're going to start talking. Because I don't want you the same at the end of 22 as you started 22. Not that you're a bad person. I just want you that much further along with God. Every Sunday, my, my goal is for you to grow just a little bit closer to Jesus. And this Sunday, the crushing starts. You okay with that? <laughs> so enthusiastic. <laughs> what? <laughs> From this day forward, I will fulfill my purpose. We've had a challenge every week for the last four weeks, three weeks, today's the fourth. They're in your notes. But from this day forward, I will fulfill my purpose. That is what my relationship with God looks like. Right there. That's what my relationship with my purpose looks like. Right there. If you have any questions on your assignment, on your calling, believe, belong, become, build. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the assignment that you have given each one of us. Lord, we understand that a crushing does take place. We understand that it's difficult sometimes to invite people, to bring people to step out. But God, I know that if we can endure the crushing, joy comes. Fulfillment comes, satisf satisfaction comes, satisfaction comes. God, I pray that as we begin to think about the names of who you want us to invite 
the names of people who need miracles, the names of people who need to be touched by Your mercy and by Your grace, God, I pray that throughout this month of March that You will give us a heart for those who need You. And that You will give us the faith to endure, endure the crushing of fulfilling the call that is upon our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for tuning in today. For more content like this, visit our website, www.pathwaychurchok.com to see the variety of ways you can download this content and so much more. It's our pleasure that you would tune in, and we believe that if you take the content you just heard, write down the parts that spoke to you, and work on a plan to apply it, you will not be the same person a year from now. We hope today you can take this content, apply it, share it, let it change you, and you can become all God has called you to become. Thank you again for tuning in. We'll be together again soon. Until then, keep growing.